Good day. Welcome to your favorite 30-minute magazine program. As we unplug negativity and connect positivity this child month, we urge you to continue to nurture your children's talents, prioritize their health and mental wellness, especially during this period. We know being home every day, all day, can be quite monotonous for all little ones. That's why we encourage you to find creative ways to keep them occupied. And no, we don't mean schoolwork. How about engaging in a karaoke session or incorporating your child in your workout? If we continue to band together, we can overcome COVID-19. We have a lot lined up for you. Stay with us. The first technique that will be explained today is the technique of boiling. What we advise is for you to obtain clean water, water that you can see through. Then you would place it into a pot, you'd cover the pot and allow for it to boil. Allow for rolling boil for about five minutes. Then it would look something like this. Then after you would have achieved the five minutes of rolling boil, then you'd allow for it to cool. Then you would place it inside of another container. Use an airtight container to store your water. If the water is not used within a few weeks, be sure to carry out additional treatment of the water that may include boiling the water once more. Even as we keep our children healthy, we also want to maintain their active lifestyle. Here's how little Zoe Nemhard achieves this during quarantine. Peekaboo, I see you. Oh, hi, I'm Zoe. Remember me? Last week, I showed you how to make scrambled eggs. And if you missed that video, go to JS YouTube channel. And now, this week, I'm going to show you what is it like since COVID-19. So guys, because of COVID-19, school has been closed since March. And... I can't get to see my teacher in person, nor my friends in person. I can I cannot see my family in Nigel in person, but I get to see them through WhatsApp. Thank God for WhatsApp. I miss my family in Nigel. I miss my grandma's cooking. Boy Zoya, we sure are here. I miss going to the farm with my grandpa. And guys, I my cow had a baby calf, but I missed the birth. And most of all, I miss going out with my friends to the beach, to the movies for ice cream, to the beach park. I miss everything about Negril. And I miss my family in Kingston. I can't wait to see them again. I'm bored in the house and I'm in a house board. Bored in the house and I'm in a house board. Most days. But I made the best of it. I go to my bed late. And I wake up late. I have breakfast. And I do work. And I have breaks. And I do even more work. And then I'm done for the day. I still do my ballet lessons. And I practice my piano. And I do fun projects. 
there are so many good things about staying home. I washed my hair by myself for the first time. Yay! I get to ride my bicycle more. I make jewelry. I recycle. I've learned how to make eggs. And I can make pizza now. I get to bake more often. And I get to spend time with my mommy. We exercise. We chat and laugh and karaoke. Staying at home can be fun. All you need to do is just make it fun. Remember, we want to hear from you. Tell us how your child stays healthy and mentally alert in this period. Send your videos to sbird.gis.gov.jl. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum, or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five hours of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. The Department of Correctional Services has been proactive in the fight against COVID-19. Here are some measures being implemented in correctional facilities across the island to combat the disease. The inmates here are older but the correctional service has a duty of care for all inmates and wards. And just like the other correctional facilities, we've implemented strict measures in terms of protective equipment for staff and the sanitizing of areas in the institutions. The same, the same pertains here at New Broughton. At this stage, we now have a mask protocol for all staff in line with the Prime Minister's declaration under the most recent disaster order. We also have checked that the wash stations are in all facilities as they're supposed to be and hand sanitizer has been properly distributed. We've also ensured that all points of entry for all of our facilities have the ability to do temperature checks. That um, the questionnaire that we've insisted at the entrance to all facilities is actually being used. So you know things are progressing but more importantly because we're out of the first phase 
when you know the virus had just come to Jamaica. We've also planned to should the worst visit us and there indeed become um, someone infected in one of our facilities and all facilities have their isolation space. So this group is particularly vulnerable because as we've said time and time again, the virus won't appear here by accident. It will be brought in by either a visitor or by a guard. Now we've suspended visits so it really only puts the um, responsibility on our waters to keep the virus out. So we still have to review what is taking place at all of our facilities nationally to ensure that um, the procedures we've put in place are indeed being adhered to. Since the COVID, we have built about 160 masks and we have issued over 50 to members of staff. We will continue to do it for the inmates when it comes. Because it's an open ear institution, so what we have to do, we sensitize them daily as to what may happen if and when they should catch it. But what happens now, what we do for ourselves as medical staff, we carry the safety precaution, staying at the front, dozing necessary safety, wash our hands, temperature, etc. So we try to secure ourselves to secure them. I've toured quite a few other facilities thus far. I mean, we, we've been trying to do it on a weekly basis to allow for the, the internal ministry work. However, generally what I'm seeing is is good levels of adherence to the procedures that Commissioner would have circulated in his, in his plan of action. But even where we don't tour, we have a Friday morning call weekly with all superintendents that go through the checklist to really see how we're doing and how preparations are progressing and to really have a frank assessment as to where we are in terms of our own preparation. And we have been having significant dialogue with the Minister of Health to ensure that our protocols match theirs and that there is uh, procedures in place for the potential need to transfer prisoners to, to their facilities. To properly carry out a hand rub, Apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe. It's now common practice to use alcohol-based hand sanitizer when soap and water are not readily available. We want to make you self-sufficient by showing you how easy it is to make your own alcohol-based hand rub. Hi there, thanks for joining us. I know, like myself, some of you are working from home. As you can see, I've turned my dinner table into a makeshift office, and I always have my trusty hand sanitizer with me. It's finished, so we're going to make homemade hand sanitizer. We have a four ingredient hand sanitizer. The most important ingredient is alcohol and it has to be 62% volume or above and aloe vera and we have vitamin E oil and an essential oil just to make it smell nice so follow me into the kitchen first things first is to turn our aloe vera leaf into aloe vera gel. Um, it's not going to have the same consistency as the aloe vera gel that you'd buy in the store, but I trust this over store-bought because you don't know what they put in it. So, first things first, wash it. And then we put it in our blender to smoothen it out. Thank you. 
what we're aiming for is a third cup of aloe vera gel slash juice and two thirds cup of alcohol. We're doing it two to one because the most important ingredient is the alcohol. Now that we've blended our aloe vera, we're going to put a third cup of the aloe. Wow, my measurement is on point, man. Whoa, just right. But as I said, the main and most important ingredient is this right here, the alcohol. We're going to use two third cup of alcohol to a third cup of the aloe vera. I have here my measuring cup and I'm going to pour two thirds of the rubbing alcohol into the cup. And I'm going to add a third of the aloe vera gel. For some persons, this will do. But for me, I want to add some vitamin E oil so as to give a little more softness for the hands so i'm going to put two to three drops of it so it's thick as i said this is optional or you could use glycerin if you have it at home then the next one is the essential oil i chose tangerine I like this, that smell and I'm going to add maybe six to eight drops and it's purely for cosmetic purposes it doesn't add anything as long as you have the rubbing alcohol you should be good then I will just mix them together in a clean container after you mix the ingredients together you pour now that we've made our homemade hand sanitizer the only thing left to do is to try it out very moisturizing wow it's very strong too. It smells a lot like the alcohol with a tinge of the tangerine. So you can try it out right there in the comfort of your home. If you're not one pop down and thank it, thank it. You feel bone mosquito and run with dengue. So no make water sickling open container. For them to read up and drop a danger. Usha them out, run them away. Slap them with the zapper and down them with spray. Use mosquito net and mosquito screen. Protect your household, now make them come in. If you're not one pop down and thank it, thank it. If you bone mosquito and run with dengue. If and lick your head and your joints and your eye and your warm fever mitt and your temperature high it could be dengue don't hesitate see a doctor don't self-medicate for some pain killer can make you bleed and you will try if you recover and no success we now want pop down and thank you thank you with a bone mosquito and run with dengue a message from the ministry of health June is the start of the Atlantic hurricane season and already forecasters are predicting an above normal period with more than six hurricanes projected, is a rundown of what certain meteorological terms mean. Every month of the year, there has been in our history some incidents of flooding that has taken place in some aspect of the country. And that is something that we have to take note of. Apart from monitoring and giving the forecast, we are also responsible for warnings. 
And so there are some warnings that we want you to take special heed to if you consider yourself to be vulnerable in any situation. When we speak about a flash flood watch, it means that there is a feature, some kind of weather system that is going to produce enough rainfall that makes it possible for you to get flooding. So it means start to watch because the water levels are going to be increasing and there is the possibility of the flooding. Now, if we start to see that in some area, flooding has started to occur, or if we believe that the flooding has been so close to an area that it is going to happen in that area in a short space of time, we will escalate that flash flood watch and refer to it as a flash flood warning. So when we talk about a flash flood warning, it means not only that the flooding is possible, but the flooding either has already started to happen or is going to happen in a very short space of time because it is very close to that area. So it is important to know what the watch means as opposed to what the warning means. Usually with the warning, we will not only issue a warning, but we will also tell you what kind of actions are important or what you should not do. Like do not go through flooded waterways because it could pose a risk to your life and to your property. Also, if you live in low-lying or flood-prone areas, if it is an area that is regularly experiencing flooding, a flash flood warning for your area would mean that now is the time to move to higher ground because the flooding has already started or is going to happen very shortly. It is also important for us to know where we live because sometimes in our messages we might not refer to the actual town but we will tell you what part of the country the flood watch or the flood warning is relevant to. So if we talk about central parishes, we are referring to Clarendon. We're also talking about Manchester. We're also talking about St. Anne. These are central parishes. So you have to be knowledgeable of where you live so that you know whether the message actually applies to you. The messages that we issue for hurricanes and tropical storms are watches and warnings as well, like the flooding. But in this case, for a tropical storm or a hurricane, when we issue a watch, it means the conditions that are associated with the storm or the hurricane are possible within a certain time frame. If you hear tropical storm or hurricane watch, you could get the impact of that system within a day and a half, 36 hours. If we mention that it is a tropical storm or a hurricane warning, it means that you only have one day before that thing can affect you. So we are moving to how quickly you need to make sure that you are prepared by naming it a watch or a warning. So the watch is the first level of the alert that there is something that is likely to affect you. But when we move to a warning, it means now is the time to batten down because you most likely are going to experience that storm or hurricane. We might have a tropical wave, which is the least of, the, of, of them in that it can still cause a lot of rain and it can still cause flooding and devastation, but it will not have very strong winds associated with it. But then there is the tropical depression that is a little stronger because now you have winds that are moving with it, gusty winds, and it also has a lot of rainfall. Then you have tropical storms, which is a more severe kind of tropical depression because the winds are even stronger. And then if it gets even stronger, it could become a hurricane. So it's important that you have your radio and that your radio is battery controlled, not dependent on electricity, so that you can hear the warning messages that come from the meteorological service. Also bear in mind that if you dial 116, you will be able to hear the latest message coming out of the meteorological service related to any warnings. We cannot stop paying attention. We cannot let down our guard. You have to prepare yourself and stay prepared until we are out of the threat. Wash your hands frequently 
and maintain a three to six feet distance from persons. Families across the country are adapting to the evolving changes in daily life caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Most schools, places of public gathering, and non-essential businesses are closed, and parents and other caregivers are faced with helping families adjust to the new normal. This includes trying to keep children adequately informed during the outbreak. If you want to know how you can ensure that your children are equipped with the right amount of information they need about COVID-19, follow these next steps. The first thing you have to do is make time to talk to them. Talk to your children daily about the latest news and updates, and be sure to let them know that they can come to you if and when they have questions. When talking to children, ensure that you use words and sentences that are most suitable for their age group. This is the only way to ensure that the child receives and understands the information being shared. Let your children develop the habit of watching the news with you, but ensure that the information is credible and that information overload does not occur because this can lead to anxiety. The outbreak of the coronavirus has brought with it numerous reports of racial discrimination around the world and general misinformation. So, it's important to check that your children are neither experiencing nor contributing to bullying. Make time to clarify all rumors and discriminatory claims. Explain to children how they can stay safe during the period. Talk to them about the importance of a balanced diet, social distancing, hand washing, sanitization, and other important safety measures. Children may inevitably become worried about all the changes happening around them due to COVID-19, but it is your duty as parents to assure them that steps are being taken every day to keep them safe. Impress upon them that, rather than be worried, they should be prepared. The National Parenting Support Commission urges parents to send the right messages. No group is responsible for COVID-19. We have to practice the right values and attitudes. Our children are always listening to us. We need to teach them to respect and love everyone. The National Parenting Support Commission cares. What to do if you think you have been exposed or are experiencing signs and symptoms of COVID-19? Immediately call 888-1LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. In addition, you should stay at home. Don't go to work, school, or any public place. Do not use public transport. And avoid visitors to your home. You may need to do this for up to 14 days to reduce the spread of the infection. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And that's all the time that's been allotted to us on this station. Be sure to join us tomorrow for another information-packed program. Join us online at your leisure. There's our website, jis.gov.jm, our YouTube channel, social media, and our mobile app that's smartphone compatible. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Be safe and come your yard. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.